What's up, everybody out there in YouTube land? Rat2501 here. All right, so this is another video from Popcross Studios. And this is What If Pokemon Were SCPs? Part 2. Lore and Speed Paint. So I'm just going to start off with Part 2. Because if it's... And then maybe I'll do Part 1. I tend to do that a lot. I do this one because it's more recent. So let's see what he's got for us here. This seems interesting. Just a second. Yeah. All right. So, let's go. In some ways, these episodes of doing Pokemon as SCPs almost feels like cheating. I mean, in a <laughs> lot of ways, Pokemon already are SCPs. That's so true. All really That's doing true. Here is adapting them into the SCP format and drawing them a little bit more rendered. Mr. Mime. Looking. Dude, oh, that's that badass. I like really that. Well to that last round. I really enjoyed making it. So why not make a whole series of these? In the very least, two episodes. I want to see more SCPs as superheroes so and villains, in, man. Let's I want to see more of that. Hit like. If you want, subscribe. Yeah. If you feel like. Oh, I'm Either definitely way, subscribed to this guy already. Show. I love this guy's shit. Welcome back, everyone. Once again, I'm oh, Professor Oh, God. Oka. That is Here a horrific one right there for an SCP. In an attempt to get you all more well-informed on the creatures and beings you're charged with studying and containing. Let's begin. Item number SCP-P770. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. P770 is to be kept in a standard containment cell with triple layered grouting to ensure none of its granular mass can slip through any cracks. Good. The floor of its containment is to be lined with 5 kilograms of sand, but no more than that is to be introduced to prevent it from gaining strength. Description. P770 is a sentient mass of sand with seashells lining parts of its body and mouth. It has red eyes and a shovel that sticks from the top of its middle tower and seems to act like a radar for its potential prey. It was discovered uh -oh. after reports of people going missing on an isolated beach in Hawaii, specifically on the island of Honolulu, came to the foundation's Very attention. Very clever! Three agents were dispatched and all beachgoers were ridded from the area to investigate, but initially they found nothing. There were still some abandoned towels and umbrellas and a half-built sandcastle, but nothing unusual to be seen. Hmm. But, about 20 minutes into searching the area, one of the agents suddenly acquired a dead-eyed gaze and marched over to the half-built sandcastle, then began to work on it further. The other agents initially tried to stop her, then simply observed, standing guard and reporting back the occurrence over comms. The agent yeah. completed the final tower, then seemed to snap out of her daze. As she started to ask what had just happened, one of the towers suddenly came to life and grabbed her. A mouth with teeth formed of shells opened in the castle's center, and oh, she was forced no. inside. The other agents tried to grab her legs and pull her out, but the sentient sand was far too strong, and in seconds the agent had vanished. The sand then reached for the other agents next, and their weapons were useless against the grainy mass, so they were forced to retreat. They later returned with reinforcements, shields, shovels, and a vacuum-sealed cage. Eventually, they were able to get the creature into containment, where it has stayed for the time since. Later investigations of the beach found piles of bones and decaying bodies beneath the sand. The deceased agent was found, and an autopsy was done, and surprisingly, the thing that killed her was not suffocation from being under the sand. Tests are still being done, but the working theory is that her very soul was ripped from her body by the creature. We believe that is the main source of food for this creature, but, again, tests are still being done on this anomalous sandcastle. That is pretty damn awesome! And he even gives it the Pokemon number. Nice! Dude, this is awesome! I love Item this guy's shit! SCP oh, P212. damn. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. P212 is to be kept in a 10 foot by 10 foot containment cell with reinforced titanium walls. Any agents entering containment with the creature are required to wear specialized body armor to avoid having limbs severed by the creature. <laughs> Description. P212 is a 6 foot tall crustacean like insect humanoid with skin as hard as steel. It has two massive pincers that a account carapace for a is third hard of its steel, body weight. It has a set of four wings, but these do not seem to give it the ability to fly. It predominantly uses them to regulate its body temperature. It is believed that this creature is actually an evolved version of an SCP that agents had been tracking through the Vancouver forest some years ago. SCP-P123. The creature was slightly smaller and had a awesome. green hide instead of red. Their efforts to track it were halted when a black market exotic animal dealer managed to get the creature first and evade Foundation grasp. 
We later got word that it had been traded in California to a wealthy tech mogul, and that when the creature was traded, for some reason it underwent rapid metamorphosis into a red crustacean-like state, leading us to believe it is the creature we now refer to as P212, though we don't have definitive proof that these are the same creature. Regardless, the tech mogul was later found dead in pieces with his home destroyed and no sign of the creature he'd acquired. Three weeks later, following reports of a three-headed creature terrifying hikers in Tennessee Valley led us to locating P212. Three-headed creature? We hadn't anticipated this being the same creature, based on the description, but agents were dispatched to see if this was a new case. As it turned out, this was indeed the newly classified SCP-P212. Its large claws have eye-like patterns on them that make oh, it seem okay. from a distance, or well in a state of immense fear, that the creature has three heads. Oh, I thought it was Agents like another Pokemon had lured them there. The creature at the home of its previous Because there are many, so several, three, full at least a couple three-headed Pokemon. To apprehend it. Reinforcements were sent in battle armor, and while P212 did fight back hard, the agents were eventually able to capture and contain the creature for transport to Site-19, where it has remained ever since. Later searches for any possible eggs or offspring this creature could have sired thankfully produced no results, but many black bears were found mercilessly torn apart, Damn. presumably by P212. The creature has shown that Damn, once it sights Sam? a foe, it will not stop until that being or creature is reduced to a bloody mess at the creature's claws. In containment, we've been able to manage it, but now we just have to hope that there truly are no more of these creatures out in the wild. Oh. That's pretty cool. Damn, these are cool. Item number SCP-122. Object class, Keter. Special containment for Oh, he, Mr. Mime is a Keter? is to be kept within a standard humanoid containment cell. He is to be provided an audience of three operatives to watch a one-hour show he puts on daily to ensure he is satisfied <laughs> and will not flee containment. Oh my we god! We have no way of stopping him from leaving, but he seems content to remain so long as he can put on these daily shows. Description. SCP-P122 is a street performer from New York City who once performed as a simple mime, albeit one with a rather unsettling mime. appearance. Yeah, no Scattered shit. reports recall him putting on shows in the city, making minimal money, but being a fairly adept performer. He could rarely hold an audience, though, in his early days, but this was likely due to his appearance, as yeah. he was far from a conventionally attractive man and wore an unusual outfit that seemed to deliberately emphasize his odd proportions. But after a few years of performing on the street, never saying a word and attracting minimal attention, some strange reports started coming in of him doing miraculous, anomalous things. Mm -hmm. He was able to create and walk up invisible platforms and make physical barriers around his audience members. These reports were ignored initially as it was believed that they were nothing more than fairly impressive mental tricks and illusions. Mr. Mime! Perhaps he was simply a skilled hypnotist. But soon agents were flagged to the fact that this street mime was conjuring physical objects from thin air. And on top of that, it was reported that if anyone interrupted his show or heckled him, the mime would stop his show and slap the person twice across the face with his unusually large hands. He has enough strength that he was actually able to put one victim in the hospital with a concussion. Damn. The Foundation field operative went to watch a performance, and along with the rest of the audience was completely convinced by a few simple hand waves of the mime that a red and white Mustang convertible was in front of him. The car was clearly not there, but soon after the audience was convinced that it was, the car manifested before them, and the mime hopped in and drove away in it before returning to do another show on that same street corner minutes later. P-122 for questioning, but refused to speak. We're still uncertain if he is in fact mute, or if he's simply being abstinent, but he also refused to communicate with he's anyone using sign language. in character. Further research found no family history or even a home where the mime went to after performing. When the mime got frustrated with the interviewee's many questions, he manifested a hole in the wall of the room and simply walked out. Agents tried to stop him, but he put up invisible barriers and blocked anyone from getting close as he walked right out of the facility. He was clearly too powerful to be left out in civilization, but we needed to be craftier to contain him. Different agents went to him and asked the mime if he'd be willing to come do a series of private shows. He eagerly agreed and was put in a containment cell and has been there ever since, happily performing a one-hour show a day to various security and D-class personnel. 
We're still uncertain if he'll someday bore of this routine and leave, but for now he seems content to remain, uh. and he has actually been a positive addition to the Foundation, as his shows are quite entertaining to watch. This one's really clever. Instead of making him a creature, he's a human, an anomalous human. This is this one's very clever. I like this Item one. number That's... SCP-306. Oh, Object class, Keter. Special yeah, no shit. Procedures. P-306 is contained in a small mountain in the Foundation's Basically a sector. small kaiju. The site staff nearby have erected a 30-foot titanium wall around the base of the mountain Jeez. to ensure the creature does not leave. But inside its mountain home, it seems content to remain so long as no agents enter its territory. 40 <laughs> pounds of iron are to be dropped in the containment zone once a week for the creature to consume. Description. Iron. P-306 is a 20-foot-tall dinosaur-like creature with iron plating over its head it is a kaiju. and parts of its legs. This iron plating resembles an external skeleton, but is in fact made of pure steel. The creature only consumes iron and occasionally some other minerals to sustain itself. P-306 was found in part of the Andes mountain range in Chile. Hikers had been going missing, and there were reports of frequent tremors coming from a specific <laughs> mountain. Tourists were being warned to avoid it at all costs, but no explanation was given as to why the mountain was so dangerous and strange. This prompted investigation by SCP field operatives, who went searching the area in heavy armor, ready for whatever they may find, or for whatever may find them. Unfortunately, they'd soon find that their defenses were of little use. After an hour of searching, a quake began, and soon the rampaging P-306 came hurtling towards them with Dude, its horns this is badass. Pungent. Agents tried to fend it off, but the creature easily pummeled two of them to death with its skull. The other three Shh. tried to flee, but Iron only head. one escaped. Once the operative made it off the mountain, the creature stopped pursuing her and lumbered back to its home. Being territorial has proven to be this creature's most driving instinct. Anything that comes near its mountain is violently attacked. While observing the creature from afar, it was discovered that it will occasionally leave its mountain, but for the sole purpose of uprooting trees and digging up soil to bring back to plant around its home. The creature, well, very violent when threatened, is also clearly very caring of its environment. It was apparent after much research that the creature had to be contained, but would not stand for being uprooted from its home without a suitable yeah. replacement. This is it. why it was brought to the Ruby Sector. There was already Ruby. a small mountain adjacent to the sector where the Foundation was able to build a wall and place the creature within to live happily away from the eyes of any non-Foundation personnel. Dude, there were some the early incidents of agents entering its containment and being attacked, but we've since learned not to disturb its territory and simply feed it and study it from afar. P-306 has not attempted a breach, and we have no reason to believe that it ever will. Yeah, so just wait till the Occult Coalition domain, finds out about it. I'm sure they'll do something stupid. Gone. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. If you have any questions, you can file them in the comments below. But either way, that's all for today. Questions in the comments below we're under I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, that's it, huh? Oh, man, I definitely gotta do part one now. Holy crap, that was awesome! The story they give them, it's well, so freaking cool! I'd definitely say the cool. second round was better than the first round. This video might end up going in the best of Pop Cross playlist. That yeah. is, until I do a third episode that I hopefully end up liking more. Which, by the way, all of the Pokemon I used for this I took as suggestions from the previous video's comment section. So thank you to everyone who suggested these okay, guys. Okay, why the hell I had to ever have a freaking pentagram on his head? Because I knew nothing about that Pokemon, and it was almost too easy to make into an SCP. It's got some really creepy lore to it. Then yes. Anyway, I'd love to get more yes, Pokemon exactly. suggestions for another round of this, or different things to that do. That Sandcastle is, for SCPs, SCPs, that thing is, is all those kinds of things. big freaking easy mode. And of course, if you're new to the channel and haven't seen the first episode of this, you can oh go my check gosh. it out, I'll link it in the cards Holy or whatever, crap. or you can watch some of my other SCP stuff. I yes. have a whole series of turning SCPs into superheroes and supervillains. But besides I want that, more that's of all that. for today. I'm Christian Pearson, this has been Popcross Studios, home of the Nerdy Start videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next episode on Friday, which is the Community Redraw and the Multiverse Tales story. I'll see you there, everyone. Goodbye. Okay, so that was... What if Pokemon were SCPs? Part 2 by Pop Cross Studios. Dude, guys, that was amazing. Definitely, please click on the link to the original down in the description. Get down to his channel and like the original and sub to him. Uh, oof, I don't know what that was about. That just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, tasted nasty. <laughs> anyway, of course, guys, don't forget to subscribe to me before you go, guys. Help this channel grow. 
We're uh, growing pretty fast, but we've been slowing down lately. Please help me out, guys. Spread the word, especially on my old channel. Let them know to come over here to my new channel. Uh, like, put comments in my other videos on my old channel and tell, uh, like, you know, respond to people on my old channel and let, tell them that they can come over here to my new channel and sub to me here for new stuff. And that's where this is where all the old stuff is being migrated to. Uh, thank you guys for all your support in this troubling time. I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for more Spooky Month. And bye bye.